NVIDIA's RTX 5000 series is set to be their biggest release ever. Plus, we have the RTX 5080 and 5070. I mean, this is huge. But before I get to that, AMD takes another win. This is bad, and Intel's ARC Battle Mage is a month away. And we have some performance. Welcome, everyone, to Gamer Melt. First up for today, in a recent video, I discussed the fact that AMD recently gained their largest quarterly market share jump within the desktop markets in years, jumping up to 28.7% from 23 in just one quarter. Of course, that's still a far cry from Intel's overall market share, but obviously gaining back market share from a company that had total dominance for years is a tough challenge. Either way, if we head to Amazon, you can see that AMD now claims the top 11 spots for best-selling CPUs, with the newly released 9800X3D taking the top spot. And my first thought when looking at these is that they're more in the lower end, but really we have the 7700X, then we have the 5900X, then the 7800X3D, and finally, yeah, even the 9800X3D. All in all, these aren't cheap CPUs by any means. Not only that, but Intel's top chip, the 13600KF, is two generations back while AMD has a few last-gen chips as well as obviously the brand new CPU. Sure, you could argue that Intel's Core Ultra 200 may have been more of a paper launch, but really there's still, as you can see, plenty in stock. Ultimately, I think this really shows just how bad Intel's last couple generations have been. Either way, AMD clearly has the lead here and Intel needs to do something fast. Unfortunately, the bad news doesn't stop there for Intel in today's next story. But first, I still freaking love this desk. Seriously, it's flat out sturdier than the desk I spent weeks building myself. I mean, it's rated for a very impressive 440 pounds. I'm of course talking about the E7 Pro from today's sponsor, FlexiSpot. What's wild is that it's this sturdy while still being a sit-stand desk, and that's way more useful than you might think. Besides not having to sit all day, I use mine for different B-roll perspectives when filming or just getting the perfect height. Not only that, but it comes with this awesome cable organizer and sweet magnetic cover. Plus, FlexiSpot has a ton of extras like wheels, drawers, options for your desktop. It's the perfect desk. And the best part is that when you visit my link in the description, you'll get $50 off your own E7 Pro. But that's not all because they also offer a new range of small appliances like this air purifier fire as well as this brand new walking treadmill to put your desk to better use and for their black friday sale you can get thirty dollars off so act now to get yours before they're gone now back to the story, we're starting to get a look at Intel's non-K and T-series CPUs, and given the fact that their Core Ultra 200 series have been better performance per watt, maybe not as great as a lot of people were hoping, but still better, you would think these lower power SKUs would get a very nice performance jump. Unfortunately, it looks like that may not be the case. As you can see right down here, they state that Intel is readying their budget 65 watt and 35 watt versions of their Arrow Lake CPUs under the Core Ultra 200 non-K and T lineups, which are expected to arrive by CES next year. So we're talking early January, but early benchmarks are showing that the Core Ultra 265 family delivers up to 5% better performance than its Raptor Lake counterparts in Crossmark. So yes, I will go ahead and say one of the reasons why I was saying that it may not be the case that it does much better is that we really are only looking at a couple benchmarks here from Crossmark. And obviously there are way more benchmarks other than Crossmark, but at least from what we're seeing so far, it's not looking good. And next up for today, we're starting to get a ton of new leaks regarding Intel's next generation desktop battle mage GPUs. Starting things off, this one was from a little while back by Golden Pig Upgrade, who obviously is a leaker who's been very accurate with leaks in the past. And according to this, they state that they're looking forward to Battle Mage performing brilliantly next month. And given the fact that this was done this month in November, obviously that would mean we're looking at December. 
Well, it now looks like that really very much is the case. As you can see right here, we actually have a new teaser that originally comes from this user on X. And as you can see, they are a data miner known for providing quick updates on unreleased hardware shipping manifests. And as you can see right here, it states Intel Battlemage GPU soon. Specifically, then when we look at this, it says Intel Arc Battlemage SoC December 2024, meaning this would make Intel the first GPU maker to release their next generation GPU. So we're talking before AMD as well as Nvidia. And this really is looking true because shortly after that, a shipping manifest actually leaked online on Twitter. And as you can see, there is an Intel BMG B580. So yes, it does look like we're looking at the first Battlemage GPU. And with that, like I said, tons of leaks coming out for this, we are now starting to hear some information about performance. This one originally comes from Red Gaming Tech where you can see that these chips are separated into two GPUs, though of course what they'll do is they'll take binned versions of those GPUs and then use those for lower end models versus the full GPU. Either way, as you can see, we first have a G21, which is apparently set to be equal to NVIDIA's RTX 4060 Ti. It's set to come with 12 gigabytes of memory and have a TDP of 130 plus watts. Then we have the G31, which is apparently what he's saying. We are really looking at more or less equal to an RTX 4070 Super, as well as potentially even a 4070 Ti. Either way, this one apparently comes with 16 gigabytes, if all of this is correct, of memory, as well as a TDP of 225 plus watts. Now, depending on who you are, that could sound really good or it may sound horrible, but Ultimately, I would argue that this 100% comes down to price. This could be a fairly decent GPU, even with the release of NVIDIA's next generation 5000 series, if they price it well. And speaking of NVIDIA's next generation RTX 5000 series, I actually have a couple huge stories for those upcoming GPUs. Starting things off, NVIDIA's RTX 40 series is dwindling around the world, making the recent leaks we've seen about NVIDIA moving production to the 5000 series look to be spot on. And now it's looking like NVIDIA is planning to release more than just the RTX 5090. As leaks from the board channels forum show, yes, NVIDIA is planning quite a bit here. Starting things off, as you can see, the RTX 5090D, and obviously with this being board channels forum, this is located in China, so their main focus is the 5090D, but the regular 5090 should be releasing right alongside it, but you can see the 5090D model will not be released until early January. Moving on, we actually have the 5080 series, which apparently the 4080 Super is mostly gone from manufacturers, and the 5080 will be releasing in early January as well, at least if all of this ends up being correct. But it actually doesn't even stop there because according to this, the 4070 Ti Super has a small supply left with Nvidia and it will be discontinued at the same pace as the 4080 Super. And then we have the 4070 and 4070 Super and those are apparently expected where the supply will be limited throughout the fourth quarter of this year, which is less supply, it will be less supply than Q3 then it's expected that it will effectively end in December with apparently a release of the RTX 5070 in February. Basically, when it comes to NVIDIA's RTX 5000 series, the company is not playing around. And this brings me to the biggest story of the day. Simply put, it's looking like their RTX 50 series is shaping up to be their biggest release ever. As you can see right down here, they actually stated Team Green's next-gen gaming GPUs might be one of the most awaited releases on the market, 
given that the company has evolved into a much larger firm compared to what it was when they released the Ada Lovelace lineup. Simply put, because AI has become such a dominant market driver and NVIDIA's gaming GPUs come with tensor cores that can power AI, companies will be clamoring for their new tech, especially given NVIDIA has been having some issues with their next-gen AI accelerator. And that's actually been proven with the announcement from Zotac's parent company. You can see that the parent company, PC Partner, which is also responsible for NO3D and Manly, and they've actually shifted their operation from China to Singapore, all in an attempt to avoid tariffs. Basically, it is seriously looking like NVIDIA's next generation RTX 5000 series are not only coming and coming fast, but they really are set to be one of, if not the absolute biggest RTX launch from NVIDIA ever.